In this lesson, we're going to cover the final mas'ala in this subchapter, bi-idhnillah. And that is, al-mas'alatu al-khamisa, the fifth issue. Ma yusna'u bil-udhiya, wa ma yalzamu al-mudahi idha dakhalati al-ashr. We're going to cover two, two things. The first is, what is done with the sacrificial animal? So after a person has slaughtered, what does he do with the meat? And the second is, what's required from the person who sacrifices once the ten days of the hijjah begins? So the first matter, ma yusna'u bil What is done with the sacrificial animal? What is done with the meat? The authors, they say, yusannu lil mudahi an ya'kula min udhiyatihi. It is recommended for the one who sacrifices that he eats from his sacrificial animal. وَيُهْدِي لِلْأَقَارِبِ وَالْجِيرَانِ وَالْأَصْدِقَاءِ And to gift some of the meat to his relatives, his neighbors, and his friends and colleagues. وَيَتَصَدَّقَ عَلَى الْفُقَرَاءِ And likewise to give in charity to the poor and needy. لِقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى And this is based on the saying of Allah the Most High. فَكُلُوا مِنْهَا وَأَطْعِمُوا الْبَائِسَ الْفَقِيرِ So eat from it, yani the sacrificial animal, and feed those who are extremely poor. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here, he encourages us to eat from the sacrificial animal and to likewise give some in charity. The authors, they continue, they say, وَيُسْتَحَبُّ يَجْعَلَهَا أَثْلَاثَةً And it's recommended that they split the meat into three parts. ثُلُثٌ لِأَهْلِ بَيْتِهِ One third for the members of his household. So he saves some for himself. وَثُلُثٌ يُطْعِمُهُ فُقَرَاءَ جِيرَانِهِ Another third he feeds the poor from those living around him, his neighbors. وَيُهْدِي الثُّلُثِ And the final third, he gives it to his relatives, his friends and so on. And this is based on the hadith of Ibn Abbas. لحديث Ibn Abbas رضي الله عنهما في صفة أضحية النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم Where Ibn Abbas speaks about the أضحية of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. He said, وَيُطْعِمُ أَهْلَ بَيْتِهِ الثُّلُثِ وَيُطْعِمُ فُقَرَاءَ جِرَانِهِ الثُّلُثِ وَيَتَصَدَّقُ عَلَى السُّؤَالِ بِالثُّلُثِ he said the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to feed the members of his household one third, and he used to feed the poor from amongst his neighbors another third, and give in charity to the needy the remaining third. And this hadith is reported by Al Hafiz Abu Musa fil Wadaif, and he said it is Hassan, as mentioned by Ibn Qudam and Al Mughni. However, this hadith. Many of the scholars, they've mentioned that it is not authentic. Al-Bani, rahimahullah, mentions in Al-Irwa that he could not find a sanad, a chain of narration for this hadith. And he says, لا أظنه يصح. I don't think it is authentic. The scholars, they mentioned that the hadith which say that the Prophet wasallam split his meat into three parts or encouraged that he, one should split the meat into three parts, these hadith are not authentic. However, the jurists, they mention that this is something which is recommended. Although the hadith is not authentic, they still mention that it's something which is recommended generally. It doesn't have to be divided into equal parts, one third for family, one third for this, one third for that. You can give more or less whatever you wish. And this is something which is sunnah. Based on the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَكُلُوا مِنْهَا Eat from it. The Prophet used to eat from it. And Allah says, give some to the poor. So we should do that, inshaAllah. Then the authors they say, وَيَجُوزُ الدِّخَارُ لُحُومِ الْأَضَاحِ بَعْدَ ثَلَاثَةِ أَيَّامِ It's permissible to store the meat of the sacrificial animal for after three days. So once ayyamu tashriq has ended, you can still consume the meat that you have. You don't have to finish it within the days of slaughter. لحديث بريدة رضي الله عنه And this is based on the hadith of بريدة رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said كنت نهيتكم عن الدخار لحوم الأضاحي فوق ثلاث. I prohibited you from storing the meat of the sacrificial animal for over three days. And this was the case at the start. The Prophet ﷺ prohibited them from storing the meat over three days. And that is because there were some poor people who came to Medina seeking meat. So the Prophet ﷺ prohibited them from storing the meat so that they could give in charity. So if he allowed them to store it, perhaps they would keep it in their household. But because he prohibited them, and it, it's not likely that they're going to consume all of it within the three days. So they would have to give some in charity and so on. But this was their command at the beginning. And then when that uh, reason for, for this command ceased, it was no longer there. The Prophet ﷺ said, فَأَمْسِكُوا مَا بَدَا لَكُمْ 
now you can store for however long you wish so this is the hadith the previous command was abrogated because the reason was no longer there now you can store for as long as you wish meaning you don't have to consume all of the meat within the days of a tashriq you can store it for afterwards and this is an authentic hadith reported by muslim so this is the first mas'ala the first part is that the meat should be eaten it should be given in charity and it should be gifted to family friends and so on the scholars they mention such as uh, sheikh bin baz sheikh uthaymin they were asked can we gift some to the kuffar if we have kuffar neighbors it's especially important for us who live in the the lands of the disbelievers can you gift some to the disbelievers and they said that yes it is permissible as long as they are not from those who are fighting islam and they use as evidence the ayah where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says la yanhaakum allah 'anil ladhina lam yuqatilukum fi din wa lam yukhrijukum min diyarikum an tabarruhum wa tuqsitu ilayhim inna allah yuhibbul muqsitin allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not prohibit you from dealing justly with those who have not and he fought you or expelled you from your homes allah loves those who are just so it's permissible especially as a form of da'wah and especially if there is no muslims who you can give it to who are poor and you only have kuffar and you do it as a means of da'wah then this is something which is permissible طيب so that's the first issue the second issue ما يلزم مريد التضحية إذا دخل تعشر ذي الحجة what is required or what is binding upon the person who is slaughtering once the 10 days of the hijjah begins once the 10, 10 days of the hijjah begins what's required or what's necessary for the mudahi the one who seeks to slaughter what's required from him they mention here إذا دخل تعشر ذي الحجة حرم على من أراد أن يضحي أن يأخذ من شعره once the 10 days of the hijjah begins it becomes haram upon the one who seeks to sacrifice to take from his hair to remove any hair aw adfarihi shay'a or to remove any nails so once the 10 days of the hijjah begins and a person he wants to sacrifice he is not allowed to remove any hair or any nails hatta yudahi and this prohibition of removing hair and nails continues until he slaughters his sacrifice once he slaughtered his sacrifice either on the 10th of the hijjah or 11th 12th or 13th whichever day he's going to sacrifice once he's sacrificed that's when he can remove his hair or his nails and this is based on the hadith of um salam the hadith of um salam radiyallahu anha marfu'a which she ascribed to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the hadith is reported by muslim so um salam radiyallahu anha she said from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam idha dakhala al-ashr 'indahu udhiyatun yuridu an yudahi once the 10 days of dhul hijjah begin and a person he has a sacrificial animal which he wants to sacrifice fala ya'khudhanna sha'ran wa la yaqlimanna dhufra he must refrain from removing any hair and trimming any nails likewise wa fi riwayah in another wording fala yamassa min sha'rihi wa basharihi shay'a he must not remove any hair or any skin the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said so you're not allowed to remove any hair, any nails or any skin once the 10 days of the hijjah begins and you have a sacrificial animal or you intend to sacrifice an animal. So those who do not intend to sacrifice an animal, this doesn't apply to them. They can remove hair, they can trim their nails and so on within these 10 days of the hijjah. Likewise, the scholars, they mention that if a person who has no intention because he cannot afford it or for whatever reason he has no intention to sacrifice but then sometime during the days of dhul hijjah maybe on the 7th for example once he makes the intention then this hadith applies to him he has to refrain from that moment from removing hair from rem- trimming nails just like the one who had to refrain from it from the beginning of dhul hijjah until he offers his sacrifice until he offers his sacrifice طيب this is our lesson barakallahu fikum subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik